Warning. Warning. Come on. Could you quit it, Parnell? I'm trying to do something here. Agents, you probably noticed some recent network disruption. That's just Theo being Theo, hacking into your systems. Warning. Unauthorized network access detected. Who wants the smoke in the bodies cleared? He became privy to Anna's world famous hot and cold game. Ooh, getting warmer. This time, instead of leading you to some soiled pants, it led you to this. Welcome home, Agent. Apologies for the shock treatment back in New York, but we had to make sure you were ready to join us. I I'm not sure where your loyalties lie, since you've killed me once already. Uh, Kelso is confident in your abilities, but I don't let just anyone join my organization. Had to learn that one the hard way. So, I put together a little test to see if you're ready to see how deep the rabbit hole really goes. I hope when we finally meet face to face, you will understand who is the real threat to the division. Happy hunting, Agent. So, looks like Keener's going all Greek mythology on you, putting you through something akin to the labors of Hercules. I certainly couldn't pass the trust trials, so I'm just going to have to live vicariously through you. Oh, uh, quick side note and update on my living situation. I tried Georgetown, and while I like the couch, the air quality, eh, not so much. <coughs> Some of you folks suggested the attic, and I like it. But I found out here that while orange and red rings are on somewhat okay terms, there's always that 1% I need to be wary of. So I decided it's best to not overstay my welcome, but to just jump around wherever I'm allowed and maybe visit to spots as close to the action as possible. This time, I ended up at the last stop at Judiciary Square, where Anna's breadcrumbs took you to face a couple of bounties. And would you know it, more Greek mythology, Hera's spite, and Zeus's affairs. Aaron's really digging in on this Greek mythology stuff, even calling you Echo at this stage. I'm not sure how versed you are in Greek mythology, but Echo's supposed to be this talkative mountain nymph that ran an interference on Hera, Zeus's wife, while Zeus ran his little love flings. Once Hera found out, Echo was subsequently cursed to not be able to talk as much. Hey... That might be a swipe on you, agents. You're not really known for your conversational skills. But who cares if you don't talk much? Your podium's a battlefield anyway. Besides, I don't mind being your voice. As long as you don't mind that voice being an oft angry, cynical type. But I digress. And even though I hate calling you by what he calls you, let's just roll with it for now. Your next step, Echo, was clearing up the police headquarters. And once that was cleared, it meant you passed this current test. And with it, earned a new nickname for whenever your next phase hits. Well done, Agent. You've passed the first test. I hope you found it, uh, illuminating. And now for your next challenge. Patience. I'll let you know when we're ready to start the next trial. Hercules. Hercules! Her- I can't do it. I can't do it. Agents, I'm starting to think that there's more to this Greek mythology themed business. Going back to Echo for a moment, the story follows that she'd fall in love with a guy named Narcissus. And this is my own interpretation to make it fit, but because she was only able to parrot back whatever he said, there's really no way she could really help or keep him from his own curse, which was to only truly love himself. So the moral of the story just might be, is if you fall head over heels for the handsome anti-villain and just spew back his propaganda, you only help justify his indifference to those he thinks are smaller than him. Think back to City Hall. Agents, I want you to be really clear on this. No matter how Keener's presenting it, this isn't a dichotomy. Keener wants you to believe that it's either him or Nat. But if those are our choices, then we're screwed either way. I know we don't have this whole presidential election thing anymore, but can you imagine a scenario when neither candidate is to our benefit? I pity the thought. But we don't have to choose between a sociopathic vanguard or a maniacal ice queen. 
when we can go our own path and choose none of the above. The problem is, that type of move is controversial and it may put you completely out your comfort zone as it just may require you to sit back and trust someone else to do the field work you've done all this time. It may require you to do some recruiting of your own, soldiers to be your feet on the ground while you reserve your energy for the biggest missions. It may require you to become your own commander of sorts with your own cell, one with no full dependency on Keener. Because when Nat and Cal are out the way, chances are Keener's house of fake hero cars will come crashing down because it's built on his ego. And his self-absorption will consume him and cause his attention to inevitably turn to anyone that disagrees with him. To anyone that's outlasted their usefulness to him. To anyone that can pose a threat to whatever his long-term goals are. His attention will turn to you, agents. But if you can build and develop just enough loyal troops to deal with the tidal wave when it eventually hits, then maybe, just maybe, you can save what remains on your own terms. But maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself. I surely have no clue where all this is taking us. One thing you can be sure of is that I'll be watching.